Fight Disciples. Welcome to podcast episode number 869. We are the Fight Disciples. Yes, we're back together. Look at us. If you are watching us on YouTube, you can see that this is a little bit of a different setting because we are in Las Vegas for UFC 300 and that's what this show is dedicated towards. Your preview for maybe the most stacked fight card. And I use fight card as a general term, both bringing in boxing and MMA of the year. From top to bottom, it is ridiculous. We're going to get stuck into it. We're going to give you a few picks. We're going to give you a few bits of insight as to what we've seen so far. Uh, and we're going to get stuck right on into the show. Um, how was your travels? All right. How's it, how's it been without me? It's been weird because obviously I didn't realise how much work's involved. And that's why the social media slowed down a little bit. Done this as a lesson, you see. All Done this, this to teach him stuff. TikTok and Instagram and reeling. It's all... Uh, it's all very repetitive and tough. Thankfully, Norman. Norman stepped up and had a go. So it was nice that Norman got involved. But yeah, it's been good, man. It's been good. It, listen, we didn't have the same regular output because certain guests did turn up and I appreciate them is. so much. Here he is. One or two Here didn't he turn is. up. Workman yeah, and his exactly. tools now. Watch yeah. him now. <laughs> exactly. But, uh, but listen. Everyone's been in the comments section saying, eh, where is Adam? It's not the same without you, Adam. No, no, it's not. Is it? Do you know what I, like, I love, right? About when people, I love conspiracy theorists. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. But I'm a, I'm oh, there's a, been a few of them, don't you worry? Obviously, I've been uh, like gone. I've gone full. What's the geezer on Twenty Four called? Kiefer Sutherland. Sutherland. Yeah, but what's his character called? Jack some or other. Jack Bauer. That's him, right? I've gone full Jack. I've gone dark. Yeah. For gone last, rogue. For the last couple of weeks, been doing all sorts of little bits and bats. A lot of it is connected to Fight Disciples and trying uh, to help. Put us in a position so we could do more of this because we love doing this, right? But then you're filling me in on what people are saying on our social media channels as to why I'm not. Hasn't been here. there for a week. He's obviously gone. He's left. <laughs> Spent eight years working with this prat, right? Building this to what we've built it to. Oh, yeah. he ain't been here for a week. He didn't tell us he were off. <laughs> he's gone. He's left the company. He's 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 out, he's out the door. Yeah, I'm still here. Not only gone, gone to. He's gone to launch somebody else's channel. <laughs> Wait, it took him eight years to launch his own. That's technically true. I have gone to launch somebody else's channel, but I am still here. Of course. Under, under, 110 uh, percent. And hopefully over the next, I'll over egg this, next couple of months, you're going to start to see a little bit of an, a, a difference in the output and the things that we are getting involved in. Um, which is all good stuff. You're yeah. going to get more stuff. You're going to get more fight disciples. You're going to get more of uh, me and Nick doing doing what we're doing. And hopefully we're going to be in a position to get you at more events as well. Because I think one of the things that we love doing is obviously doing this, being on the ground, being at events. And we get messages from people who are living vicariously through us, doing what we're doing for a living. And we absolutely adore that. Uh, but it would be pretty cool to bring you along yeah. on this mad little journey, wouldn't it? Uh, so over the next couple of months, hopefully you're going to start to see that come come to fruition. Yes, there's other projects that we're doing. Yes, I am doing some other bits and bats, as is he. Nobody moans at him when he goes and works for other people. <laughs> yeah? But we're here. We're here for UFC 300, and I'm fucking mega excited about it, right? And I'm mega excited to the point where... I think a small percentage of MMA fans, and this don't take this personally, right? This is this is not a generalisation because I think a large percentage of the MMA fans know exactly what they're getting at the weekend and they're all in on UFC 300, and rightfully so. But there is a small percentage of, U, of, of UFC fans, MMA fans, they're a bit spoiled, I'm going to tell you. Yeah. You're a, bit, you're a tiny bit spoiled. There's a few people complaining about this card. There's, oh, crap. UFC 300's crap. And I'm like... Right, justify crap to me. Tell me why it's crap. And the answers that come back my way all lead towards a person, or a couple Personality. of people. No, a couple of pe a couple of people that are that have been fucking spoiled. Yeah, yeah. For a long period of time, and I've always said maybe that star power, that John Jones, that Conor McGregor, that Ronda Rousey, that Brock whatever. Lesnar. Brock Lesnar. Right. Okay. Maybe that's not on this card. But as a fight card, this is the greatest fight card that I think I've ever been involved in. Yeah. From top to bottom, I think this is the best one that I have ever been 
associated with. In in the thirteen fights that are on the card, ten of them are absolutely unmissable and could go on any pay per view at any time for UFC. The other two are absolute zingers that you can't miss. And yes, there's one on there which is a potential future superstar that's got himself a slot because of potentially what he could go on and do in the future. Other than that, it's absolutely stacked to bits. I think this stands up as one of the greatest fight cards in fight sports period. Now, I know it's he, that's a big statement to say now because it hasn't happened yet. And you look back in history, and just in the UFC alone, you look back at UFC 200, you look back at like um, some of the Conor McGregor events, 196 and stuff like that, and you look back and go, iconic moments, iconic. Yeah. But you've had, history's on their side as well, and there's been some iconic events like the Rumble in the Jungle and things like that, of course, iconic moments. This, for me, stands up with anything with the potential that it's got, because I don't think there's ever been a fight card that is as stacked as this, with 12 either current or former champions. You have a stat, don't you? Oh. With I've got a stat on that for you in a, a double Olympic gold medalist with a boxing Hall of Famer uh, on there as well. And there's just there's so many you know kickboxing icon on there. You Bonus can, machines, submission <laughs> machines, knockout machines. The highlight reel himself, Justin Gaethje. Come on, like the, there must be half a dozen, if not more, future Hall of Famers on this card alone. The only complaint you can have is that it has not got that that, that cherry on the cake marquee name. No, no, but listen. my argument to that would be, if this had a Conor McGregor in the main event, then you ain't getting Davis and Figueredo, Cody Garbrandt kicking things off. No. Right, and I don't. I don't think anybody watching this genuinely is going to complain about it because Absolutely they not. because they it's know what, because they know what they're watching. Yeah, and people who have been on the Fight Disciples journey that listen to us and 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 watch our stuff, they know that this is stacked. Yeah. So I don't think I genuinely don't think that we're talking to our <clears throat> our audience. I think we're talking to a very small select amount of audience that don't cross over. Well, yeah. To an extent, yeah. What what I would say is that this might not necessarily appeal to the casual fan because of the star name, if that makes sense. But the, the, from a from a name point of view, yeah, of course. But when but my argument back is, well, what what do you want? What do you want out of your fight night? What do you want? Yeah, you want multiple fights that are fifty fifty that are going to be guaranteed entertainment. There's thirteen there. There's 13, well, there's absolutely 12. You could argue there's, there's, there's 12 there that could headline any UFC event. That's, the, that's how strong this card is. I think there's ever been anything like it, not stacked like this in terms of, we've seen nights of heavyweights in boxing where they've had you know, half a dozen big heavyweight fights on, but they're also littered with a load of layups. Here's, a pr- here's proof for you, right? We've made, we, didn't make, we didn't make the complaint. We just highlighted this particular scenario that I'm going to bring to you now. We highlighted this to the guys that we work with at TNT Sports, right? TNT Sports, never in the history, a, a, a broadcast yeah. the early prelims. That's right. You get the prelims, don't you? You normally miss about two or three fights. The early prelims, the which early are prelims. exclusive to Fight Pass. Right, you miss them. You're not missing them this week. Yeah. TNT have kicked off. Well, they ain't kicked off. They've gone back to the UFC, their broadcast partner. They've explained, listen, man, you cannot start a fight night with Cody Garbrandt and Davidson Figueredo and our audience miss it. Yeah, exactly. So you're getting it. 11 o'clock, it'll start on Saturday evening. You will get the early prelims. You'll get the prelims and you'll get the main card. So you don't need five pa- Fight Pass this weekend. Even though Fight Pass is brilliant and I would recommend it for any UFC fan to get Fight Pass if you're as into it as, as much as we are. This weekend, it just goes to prove how stacked that card mm-hmm. is. That TNT have gone back and said we need we need to show you're, the early prelims. Yeah, basically, if you if you're not used to watching UFC events, if you're come across here because I've been pushing all week saying if this isn't if you're not into UFC, if you're not into MMA, and you just follow us for the boxing or for the crack, this is the event to dip your toe into because the very first fight on the very first prelims at 11 p.m. UK time right. features two former world champions is going to be an absolute belter and the night that that kicks things off and from there you're going to be up till five o'clock in the morning because it's just going to build and build and build and build and my other argument be you've there's so many current and former world champions on here future hall of famers legends everything that we've just we've just sold to you 
What, what are we missing then? Oh, we're missing that star power. Okay, let's talk about the star power. The cards You star, traditionally though. say who the star power is. Previous 200 events. Brock, oh, where's your Brock Lesnar? Brock Lesnar's rubbish. He was, he was a crossover superstar, but he was rubbish at MMA. He got completely found out. Conor McGregor's not in the same period of his career where he once was. So is Conor the big star? These are the creme de la creme of the UFC right now. Alex Pereira in the main event could well be and is a couple of a heavyweight title away. And I know that sounds mental, but if he was to do that, mm. he would be the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. That's how close he is. His rival Jamal Hill never left left the, lost the belt inside the octagon. He gave it up because of an injury and he's coming back bigger, badder and meaner than ever before. You got an all China superpower fight in the co main event with Zhang Wiley, who's probably, in fact, she is absolutely, pound for pound, the best female fighter on the planet. And she's taking on a countryman, Yang Zhao Nan, who would argue, you're living my life, bitch. I got here before you. I was the first Chinese fighter in the UFC. And you came in and you've ducked in front of me. Well, now it's my turn. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Just, just, just say that again. Justin Gaethje fights Max Holloway. In a five-round fight for the BMF belt, that alone is worth staying up till five o'clock in the He's morning. He's not even mentioned Charles Oliveira and Armin Sarikin. Anyway, yeah. right. Listen, before we get stuck into this, I'll, you're going to edit this, aren't you? Because of my schedule this week, you're going to put oh, this. Go. You're going to put all this together, right? So oh, the audio that you're listening to right now, that should be straightforward. But I'm going to do something now because I want to show people what we can see because this gives you the Vegas feel, man. Mm-hmm. We want you to feel the Vegas feel. So I'm going to hit my video now, right? I can, I can do this. You're going I'm to chop this into that. Yeah, so okay. what? So people can see the picture 13, now, right? 13 minutes in. Right, so I'll just, there you go. Hi. The, this is Nick. There he is. That's what I can see. And if you look out of Nick's window, the, in fact, there's us doing the podcast, as you can see. But look at that. The T-Mobile Arena. There's a helicopter flying past there, actually. Mm-hmm. In the background there, if I zoom that in, there's the Allegiant Stadium where the Super Bowl was. And there is the bad boy the, where the uh, event is going down this weekend. T-Mobile Arena. If you're going to be all right editing that back together? I can do that. Yeah? I think. Right. If not, you know. There you go. I just wanted to show people our view because it, the sun's about to go down. Just to rub the down. salt into no, the no, no. wounds of the everyone at home. Well, the sun's about to go down and you know what I mean? You know, you've got to get that Vegas vibe. Yeah. I mean, all you can see right now if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see a bedroom, can't you? It really is, uh, really is that simple. You, you alluded... Um, uh, to the fact on the the diary that uh, is is coming out very very shortly as well. That um, it's out by now, day one of the diary. Day one of the diary will have been out. You'll have seen us obviously enjoying. It. Oh, booming an advertisement there on the side of the Timor Ballerina for Canelo. Canelo Mungia. And Mungia. There you go. Bit of box. Bit of bo- bit of boxing chat for you there. Whilst uh, whilst we're on the show. Um, but you alluded to the fact about uh, your fast. Yes. And that you genuinely believe that when... Do you know when you see like Dana doing his, his water fast and he's cutting yeah. down and he's getting his six pack out and all yeah. that type of stuff? Okay, this, you're going to clarify my point entirely here. Go on. But when you, Dana does his fasting... Yes. What does he consume? Water. Bone broth. Water. Bone broth. He drinks bone broth. He drinks bro- bone broth. Yeah. Right. What's the difference? Of drinking a beer, a Jack Daniels, a Jack Daniels and Coke... A protein shake. That's not a fast. Bone broth, protein shake. Like, what's the difference? You have lost weight, though. You Thanks. do. You do look like you've you've lost a little bit. Yeah, nugget. And you've had an haircut. Yeah. You can tell it's a big week when he's. I'm had telling it. you, because of, just because I know historically, I we will certainly look back. That's how big this week is. This week, like I've, I've been to countless UFC events. Yeah, you've lost a bit of weight and had your haircut because you know it's going to be a big, significant week. So in the years to come, when people look back at the annals of history of UFC look 300... Look how well he looked. Look at Nick Pete there. <laughs> look how good he looked there, eh? Mate, all the events over the years that I've been to, massive boxing events, you name it. I've been to this city many, many times. I've been blessed. I... I don't think I've ever bought merch. I'm a freebie merchant, don't get me wrong. If there's anything free oh, talking about... Oh. Oh, I'm all over it. Have you There's got yours? Mine. There's mine there, yeah. I'm I can't sure reach mine. Mine's down there. I'm a freebie that's, merchant, that's, but I never buy merch. That's interesting. But I'm going to get some kind of UFC 300. Merch. Check this out. This happened today. We, we Well, first and foremost, we thought we were in trouble. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, because uh, one of the chief PR ladies of the UFC um, asked us to step it, step into a different room. Yeah. So I thought, right, one Ticking of off. one of us have done Ticking something. Ticking off. Hey, nice. Hey. One of us have done something, so we got ourselves in bother. However, she took us into one side of the room and she went, guys. Um, as you know, we've got many sponsors here at the UFC, one of which is Timex. Mm -hmm. And the guys at Timex would like to reward the partners, um, the guys who work for TNT Sports, ESPN, TSN, all these different characters from around the world, would like to reward you with a bit of a gift. Seeing as that you're on site and you're here first, you get to have first pick. Timex, obviously, are a, a watch manufacturer. Look at that. Can you see that? I don't think you can get a good picture of that. There you go, get it right up there. An official UFC Timex timepiece. Beautiful, that, isn't it? Yeah. So we've all got new watches this week. You might be sporting that tomorrow. Pretty jazzy. You love a bit of free merch, you, oh, don't you? I was all in. I was all in. Got one for me dad as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't really, that was a joke. He'll come at me now going, where's my watch? That was a joke, TP. Calm down. But yeah. 300 has started strong. Started strong. Um, I might buy some merch. Did you see that yellow hoodie the guy had on Very today? good. It was it's very a good. Very smart yellow hoodie. What do you think of the bomber jackets the fighters have got? I wasn't, um, I wasn't a big fan. I'm a fan, but I'm, uh, maybe a little bit too much for me. I'm, I don't think I'm, I could pull that off. Yeah, I'm not, a bom I'm not a bomber jacket guy, to be honest with you. But it wasn't bad. Mm. Pretty smart. But I'm going to have a little moosh, yeah. Anything with 300 on it. Because I just think, looking back historically, it's like the um, the headrest covers that we took off the plane when we went to Fight Island. I've still got them at home. Don't know what the hell I'm going to do with a with a temporary head cover off an airplane seat. But again, that's the type of that's the type of bit of merch that you were been blessed to pick up. But 300, mm. I feel like, is going to be one we're going to look back on in years' time and go, wow, yeah, I was there. What an event. Again. It feels like that. It, it feels like it's going to be one of them. I was there, yeah, when that happened. And if you are a fight disciple that's on your way out, you know what to do. It is up on the socials, and uh, we'll try and arrange uh, something this week. He will definitely be there. You've you've actually arranged some cool stuff this week. He knows that I can't do the, a lot of things this week because of various bits that I've that I'm uh, committed to. Um, but he is arranged. I won't spoil it because I just want it to pop up on the on the diaries. Um, but you've arranged some quite should be cool. Good. Should be good. He has he has arranged some quite cool should things. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. There should be a little red dot in the corner of the video. Hit that. Do the business, and you'll never miss out on any of the stuff that we are bringing you this week. Right, main event: Alex Pereira versus Jamal Hill. We've seen them both today. You I spoke have. to Mr. Pereira. I spoke to them both. I spoke to Jamal Hill. Um, I never did Pereira because you know me. Don't like to do. Uh... You pulled rank on being able to speak Portuguese. The um, listen, it's very difficult to have a, a conversation with Alex, obviously, because he doesn't. Yes. We don't speak the same language. But I understand. I, listen, I understand the guy's demeanor. I understand guys. Uh, understand the guy's body language. This is a fella that has done unbelievably well in a very short period of time mm -hmm. since stepping into the UFC from Glory Kickboxing. And he's showing developments time and time again. Every time he steps in, there's massive developments, especially with the way that he can keep fights on the feet and deliver what he needs to deliver. The patterns of play are very similar every single time, but it's stopping that pattern of play. Uses low, uh, those leg kicks in order to set up that big left hand and he's putting people out for fun. The story's quite similar with Jamal Hill because he's had a short period of time mm -hmm. bursting onto the scene. I think he, uh, what did he have? Seven fights before he became champion. Yes, there was a loss in there to Paul Craig. Um, but he's been super impressive. And I know that the last 14 months has been difficult for him, obviously having to renege his belt. But once he spoke to the UFC and he realised what the plan was in order to get that belt back, which he's, he's aiming to do this weekend, um, He's he's been on he's been on board with that journey. He's a super impressive guy, Jamal Hill. Very understated, isn't he? You watch him and you think, are you as talented as this person? Are you as well rounded as this person? Are you are you, are you, you? There's loads of questions about him, but when you when you do sit with him and and feel his energy and you and you listen to the things that he's saying, you think he's like, yeah, man. You know what I mean? 
MMA sometimes is, is very recency bias heavy, isn't it? You think mm -hmm. you can be forgotten quite quickly. Yeah. And the division has, has moved massively since he gave up that belt. You can't forget the body of work that he put in. He, he beat up Glover Teixeira. Yeah. Beat him up. Yeah. And became the champion when everybody said there's no there's no chance. And you were telling me about the odds that are going into this fight at the weekend. Oh, he's a massive underdog coming into this. And when the fight was announced, I thought, oh, that's a bit, that's a big comeback fight that for Jamal. It's the, it, that's the word, isn't it? It's the fact that it's a comeback fight. Yeah. That's what makes you go, oh, I've just seen Yuri Prohatcha try and come back and go straight in with Alex Pereira. Did not end well. And I think that is the buzzword, yeah. the comeback fight. But I've got a completely different sense around this fight. Don't get me wrong, you know, I, I'd be I'd be lying if I said I didn't think Yuri Prohatchka was absolutely in that fight. And he was in that fight before he got reckless and kind of played into Alex's hands a little bit. The difference I've found this week, because flying over, if we'd done this show last week, I'd be like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with Pereira. You know, the, the bookies very rarely get it wrong. I yeah. think he's the guy. But just being around Jamal Hill, watching a lot of Jamal Hill's fights on the flight on the way over, just reminded me to go, wait a minute. Jamal Hill is a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Like, he is a dog. You know, he's from Grand Rap Rapids, Michigan, same place where Floyd. Mayweather Jr. has come from. You know, with Mate, all due respect to that part of the world, that is a really almost like a third world part of America. And there's, there's patches of them all over yeah, yeah. America. But Grand Rapids, Michigan in general, Flint, Michigan, where Clarissa yeah, yeah. Shields comes Water from. Water problems, all Jesus sorts of H. shit. Jesus Christ. You know, that's yeah. almost a third, 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 uh, what was I just said? You want to say third world. Third world kind of environment, yeah. You, the, no one gets given anything there. You've got to fight your way out of the streets, quite literally. And Jamal Hill's got that dog in him. And today he was talking about becoming a champion, blah, blah. And I said, when did, when did it actually tick, though? When did you actually think, you know what, I can do this? And he was like, no, from day one, when I walked into a gym, bit of man, that was only, what, six, seven years ago? Mm. I walked into a gym, and me and the coaches went, I'm going to be best at fighting in the world. And from that moment, he's never, ever changed thoughts. He's never moved in a different direction. He's got the motivation there of a young family, ever-growing young family that he fights for. I really like it, Jamal Hill going into this fight. Yes, I him. really do. And I think Alex, the talk around Alex is, oh, you could be the GOAT. You could go to heavyweight. Yeah, you yeah. could do this. You could do and that. And that's still the chat. Yeah. It's still the chat. You're go you look at what you've just done to Yeri. You're Now you're going to do the same thing to Jamal, and then you'll be, you know, absolutely this period's light heavyweight champ. Where, why, where'd you go next? Everyone's talking about what comes next. And I think in this sport especially, more than maybe more than any other sport, when you're busy looking over the fence to see what comes next, something comes right behind you and bites you in the arse. Mm. We've seen it to Izzy. We've seen it to Volkanovski. We've seen it to Kamara Wozman. That's what happens in this game. And don't be surprised if come Sunday morning, the early hours inside that arena, mm. we hear Bruce Buffer say, and the new yeah. for two-time Jamal Hill. Yeah, I think all logic would point towards Alex Pereira winning because you've been out for a long time, bad injury, coming back off that. We've just experienced it with Yiri with his shoulder. Yep. The activity levels of Alex Pereira, what Alex Pereira's done at light heavy, Jan Blakowicz and Yiri Prohatchke. Logic, as you, as you look at this fight, will go, well, oh. yeah, logic form, you know, rec recency. Alex Pereira's going to win this fight. But I just think... I think Jamal Hill, there's something special about him. Mm -hmm. And I think he is genuinely brave enough. And that's the key word here. You know what Alex Pereira is going to do. He's going to set you up with leg kicks and he's yeah. going to tee off with, and he's going to look to land that big bomb. Yeah. You have got to be a little bit crazy, brave, in order to go when he goes. Exactly. That. Because That's how Izzy did it. That's how Izzy did it. Yeah. Fight fire with fire. And he's, he's actually good, coming from that southpaw stance, of winning the battle of the feet is Jamal Hill in order to push you into a play. He wants you on the cage. He wants you on the cage wall. He wants you there. And he and listen, Alex Pereira, I don't think he'll be too bothered about being there mm -hmm. because he's going to back his power. But Jamal Hill's got some fucking mm -hmm. lead in them hands, man. And I think he's going to be mad enough to back himself to get in before he, he gets got, if that makes sense. He, and he's, he goes early. I think someone gets knocked out in. I think it'll be a cagey start because I think they'll both respect each other's power, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's gone by 10 minutes. Yeah. I don't think it's going up the first round. 
I really don't. And I, I, I'm like, obviously, it, it could go either way. A lot of these fights that you go, we're going to break down, could go either way because it is such a sensational card. Yeah. But I've just got a feeling that Jamal Hill is going to get him. I did. I did a preview for a betting company before I went on this mad little trip and I picked Alex Pereira based on logic of saying he's been out too long there's too many questions over yeah. whether that injury and all that type of stuff has healed Alex Pereira is the form guy I'm going with Alex Pereira to get to get the job done but the more I think about it properly and the more I, I, I pull it to pieces and the more I spend time around people and this is nothing no, this, this is nothing against Alex Pereira because he's no. not shown me any weakness or anything he's not shown me any of that I've just gone Jamal Hill's going to fire when he fires and he's got some He's got some ridiculous power, that fella. Mm-hmm. He could catch him. Yeah. So, like you said, I think it's a 50-50. Someone will get knocked out in the fight. Yeah, Someone will get stopped in the that, fight. That's the, that's the one fight out of a, 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 a cavalcade of 50-50s here. That's the one that I think the bookies might have gotten wrong. Because the last odds I seen, Jamal underdog, Hall was a big underdog. I think I seen somewhere that was 12 to it's, 1. He's, he's well worth a few quid. Fucking hell. That is absolutely worth $50 or 50, 50 pence of anybody's money. Yeah. Um, Co- is, go on. is it the same in Colmain events? No. Do you see no. Yang Zhao Nam having as much of a chance? No. And I'm massively biased because of part of the thing that I've been doing over the last two weeks. He's spending a lot of time at the PI uh, in and around athletes. There has not been a day, in fact, there's not been a minute that I've been in that PI that Whaley is not on the fucking map. Mm. I have never seen anybody work as much as her. And every day, it's not the same shit. So I'll turn up and she'll be doing wrestling. Yeah. And I'm watching her going, fucking hell, that's come on. I mean, I, I, we've seen the evidence of that with wrestling coming on when she fought Rose, for example. And then next day, I'll, I'll, I'll go downstairs, I'll do the, another job and I'll come back upstairs. And she'll be striking. I'm thinking, well, I know that you're fucking elite at that. And it's honestly, mate, it's it's like a gunshot going off when she's hitting pads. Yeah, it's ridiculous. The timing, the power, the ferocity that she's throwing stuff at. I genuinely believe that right now, Zheng Weili is the best female fighter on the planet. I yeah. can't. And she's not switched off. It's not like she's got comfortable with being the best. She's not got comfortable with being the champ. No. She's working fucking harder. She's striving for more. Mate, yeah. it's mad. She's getting. She's just doubling down on it. Everybody can have an off day. Yan Jianan last time out, I thought was absolutely brilliant. Yep. And really... First knockout in the UFC. Yeah, and, and really like, maybe go, whoa, okay. She's sound. here on merit. Oh, she's no not doubt. Here, she's not here for the headline, first all-China super fight. She's here because yeah. she deserves to be the next contender. But she's fighting the best female fighter on the planet. And that's going to take... You're going to have to do something incredible to stop Wei Li Zhang at the weekend. Rose did it. It's not impossible. No, but it can but, be done. But but I've spoken uh, last week when yeah. I was at the Apex show. Spoke to Rose, and I think I think she'll be open and admitting this publicly that the reason she's gone up in weight to obviously chase her own dreams of becoming a multi-weight world champion. But I think half of it as well is quite thankful. Like I'm not fucking fighting her again. Yeah, yeah. Because the first fight she knocks her out, and it's Rose's night, and Rose. Of course. Is, the second fight is tough, man. Ooh, that, yeah, that was New York, wasn't that's it? That's a proper scrap. I personally thought that Whaley did enough to get it that night. You were on Rosie's side. Obviously, yeah. the judges went Rosie, close. Rosie, Rosie's way. That was a tight as fuck fight. Whaley is not the same person that fought that night. She's she's ahead of that now. Look at the performances that she's put in against Joanna and all these characters. Mm-hmm. She's, she's getting better all the time. And I know why, because I'm watching her on the mats putting that graft in. Yeah. The best version of Whaley's turning up on, on Saturday night. Yeah, she fucking battered Lee Moss last time out as well. I, I, listen, it's a fight, an elite fight. She's here on merit as Yan Jianan, but yeah, Whaley Zhang is, is a speci- think, special character. Yeah, but and, and I agree with all that. And I do think she's the best female fighter on the planet right now. And she's, for me, she's pound for pound, top 10, period, across both sexes. It, it doesn't matter. She's that good. But, but Yan Jianan, was the first Chinese female fighter in the UFC. And Zhang came in, bypassed her, because she was a little bit more pleasing on the eye. Marketable, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, getting finishes. Yeah, yeah. Zhao Nan's a lot of points decisions. Yeah. She also had a bad run, Zhao Nan, where she lost back-to-back fights. Yeah. I think it was a Spars and um, Rodriguez. And then, but since then, she's rebuilt. Yeah. Since then, she's gone to Team Alpha Male. She's got this incredible relationship with Uriah Favor. They're making... 
They're producing the goods. They're producing the results. She's just got her first finish against Jessica Andrade, who is a former UFC champion. And on this card. She fucking did to her what she usually does to other people. And also, and I think this has got to be the underlying factor here, is that it's fucking Derby Day. Do you know what I mean? It's two girls from the same... Like, whatever you got, our oh, UFC belts on the line, oh, pound for pound, star, great... Mate, this is bragging rights for life in China. This is who is the best female fighter in all of Asia. Like, mm. they, they are fighting for that level of legacy, that level of respect. And when shit like that happens, people drop levels and... Rate, Mate, I've just had to sit through fucking Liverpool labouring to two defeats to fucking Man United, who are absolutely garbage. Well, a draw and a defeat to Manchester United, who are mid-table mediocre at best right now. And Liverpool are, you know, right up there challenger in Klopp's farewell season. But what happened? Because you put too much emphasis on the event rather than taking the opponent for... Well, she's ranked here or they're ranked there on merit. We should beat them. We'll run through them. Because there's so much other factors going on, because of the history, because of the legacy, because of the moment, because it's a derby, strange shit happens. And Yan Zhao Nan is absolutely fighting for their life, fighting for their own legacy. Yeah. This one this one night, Saturday night in that arena, is Yan Zhao Nan's entire career legacy. Where Zhang Wai Li, she's already been the poster girl, I'm already the superstar, I'm the star in China. She's not behaving I'm like here. that though. She doesn't behave like that. I know. But strange shit happens. Give 10 quid, bet on one of them. Exactly, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Whaley's special, man. Yeah, she is. Now. She is very good, yeah. Now. Yes. Ooh. This is fucking hard to pick. Yes. Where's your tenner going now? Mwah. Justin Gaethje versus Max Holloway. Two future guaranteed first ballot Hall of Famers. Just two absolutely remarkable, remarkable fighters. Highlight reels for days. You've got arguably the best boxer in UFC against the most entertaining look fighter. Look at you, look at you. Last week, Ilya Tapuria was the best <laughs> boxer in the UFC. That's probably still true, to be honest, but Max is a very, very special talent. Yes. Best chin in the UFC. Max, never been dropped. <sighs> yeah, it's hard to argue that. And we're talking about Justin Gaethje here, who let's forget about the, you know, the high caliber of his college wrestling days because he doesn't use it. But he has found that special ingredient, and it was after he lost to Dustin Poirier. Obviously, he's just chin- he's just knocked out Dustin Poirier mm. in the second fight. After he lost to Poirier, he sat down with Trevor Whitman, his coach, and they said, "Right, crazy berserker mode got us this far. Now let's be a bit more calculated." Yeah. And since he's done that. He's only lost in a title fight. He's only lost to the very best, i.e. Habib. And now he's come back and he looks absolutely incredible. The physique performance was mesmerising. The Poirier knockout was just simply fantastic. Him versus Max. That is one of the best fights on paper you will see anywhere, ring, cage, or fucking outside gates all year. Yeah. But who wins? The easy shout is to just go with the naturally bigger guy because we've seen Max come to this lightweight before against Dustin and fall short. Short notice, though. He came on short notice. Yeah. It wasn't a full camp. It wasn't a full 155. He did it to save a card. And look what he did. He went fucking hell for leather with yeah. Dustin Poirier, one of the best boxers. And there's another one mm-hmm. uh, in, in the UFC. And he, he, he didn't get outclassed. He narrowly lost that fight. He lost, but he narrowly lost that yeah. fight. D- Dustin yeah. was great that True. night, but as was Max, he absolutely threw the kitchen sink at him. And I know that that's all pre his fucking back and forth with um, with Volkanovski and what have you, but it's it's still there. This is a proper camp. This is a full camp. Max Holloway before UFC was a lightweight. Came to UFC, went down to featherweight. Randomly lost that uh, first fight, didn't he, against Dustin Poirier with that armbar? Mm-hmm. But then since then, yeah, he's never been, he's not he's not been stopped since then. He's not been knocked out. He's not been knocked down. And I, I just think more it, featherweight wins than anybody. I just think he's out. His output is going to win him the second half of this fight. I just don't know whether he starts quick enough. And I think if I wouldn't have seen. Justin Gaethje against Rafael Fiziev. Yeah. If I wouldn't have seen that fight, if that fight doesn't exist, I would probably pick Max Holloway to win this. Yeah. But I saw that fight, and we're not talking. You you just mentioned something there in that 
uh, Gaethje Poirier fight and how it changed Justin Gaethje and how he's now more calculated chaos. The chaos is still, it's amazing what he's done because yeah. he's still winning bonuses, still fucking must watch, but he's far more intelligent with what he's doing. He's not reckless abandon, ah, I go in there and I'll back my chin and I'll fucking nail you as he used to do. He's very clever. He's technically sound. We ne- we still haven't seen this offensive wrestling, mate. We haven't seen that. No. He doesn't use he uses it to keep the fights on the feet in order for him to be able to go and do what he wants to do. And if I wouldn't have seen the physique fight, I would probably bit back Max Holloway because I would probably have thought Max Holloway is technically a better fighter than Justin Gaethje. I don't think that now. I think Justin Gaethje is just on this sort. He's just on this prime thing mm-hmm. where he's just done physique. He's just done Dustin Poirier. You've just seen Dustin Poirier take out Benoit Saint Denis. Yeah. So the victory. Age is like a fine wine. It gets even better the the Gaethje over Poirier victory. I think Justin Gaethje is just on this crest of a wave right now where he's at his very, very, very best. And I think he'll come through on a... I mean, we might even get a doctor stoppage here, mate, because these two are just going to not fuck out yeah. each other. But I, It's I'd, got violence written all yeah. over it. And both of them keep using those same words. You know, I, I did a word association with both of them today, and when I said either name, I asked Max... Justin and I asked Justin, Max, and they both replied and went violence. They both said I re- I really, violence. Listen, it is going to be violent and it is going to be brutal, and I just hope that it's going to be a fight where they leave a piece of themselves in there. Yeah, that's it's going to be one of those fights. I, I just don't. I hope we don't get one of them where oh it stops on a cut, it stops that, that we didn't. Yeah, that, yeah. we want them to be safe. We want of them to course. come out healthy. We want the right decisions to be made. We want. You know, what a fucking ding dong! That's what. Of we course, want. of course we do. But when you get to the fourth round and there's fucking claret everywhere and they both knock shit out of each other, just as fans, we're all bloodthirsty, aren't we? We want more. We want more of it. And if a doctor comes in and wears it off, now nah, you can't go on. You know that that's probably going to be the right decision because of the health of the fighter. Do you think there's a theme in there with the BMF? Obviously, Nate that happened to Nate Diaz, didn't it, against Masvidal? Yeah, maybe. Because they're not going to quit. Just a bloody mess. They're not going to quit, and, they're, just going to, and they're going to keep going. And neither of the corner is going to pull them out, are they? Um, but I'm, I'm edging towards Justin Getchy. Just on, just because I saw the physique fight and that was technical, awesome. Weather the storm, he just showed levels that night against an elite kickboxer, and I think, I think Justin will come through. I'll go but Max. It, but it, but it'll be fucking hard. Yeah, it's going to be a brilliant fight, and, and I really like Justin Getchy. Don't get me wrong. If 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 Justin Getchy's not one of your top three, four favourite fighters in all of fight sports, then you're doing MMA wrong. You're doing UA. That's just a fact. Everybody's is a favourite fight. But I love Max Holloway. I love Hawaiian kickboxing. It's one of the most iconic ring walks out there. And when that ring walk happens... Check, his, like, check his shorts out this weekend oh, as well. Oh, amazing, yeah. When It's like when Vanderlei Silva... You know, Vanderlei lost more than he won inside the UFC octagon. His, his days were in pride. But when you heard Sandstorm by Darude, when you looked up on that screen and seen him rolling his wrists... It makes something happen. It makes the hair in the back of your neck stand up. You're gonna, you know, you're guaranteed to see something special, win, lose, or draw. And they're the type of fighters that you've grown an affinity with. I've got the exact same affinity with Max Holloway. He's been here forever and a day, and yet when they play Hawaiian kickboxer, I will be all in on Max Holloway. Atmosphere is so, going to be unbelievable when them two work. Oh, it's going to be insane. And you know why? Because it's set up by Cowboy Oliveira versus Armand Suruki. Not Cowboy Oliveira. He's not fighting. Oh, Charles, oh, Charlie Olives Oliveira. Of That's course. Right, the main man. Charles Oliveira, man. Uh, what a fight that is. We haven't seen Tarukian. Our boys over the block, I said, they've been hanging out with Suruki all this week. I spoke to them yesterday. They said he's in absolutely sensational shape. We've spoken shape. to him, though, before. We, oh, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. Time we, we, yeah, yeah. We know yeah. what type of character he I is. I mean, this fight week... It won't be a bad thing that he at, he didn't do any media today. His media starts tomorrow with the, the media junket. won't be a bad thing that he's had that extra day's break, extra day to prepare, extra day to get ready for his week or everything else. Listen, these guys are all consummate professionals. I'm aware of that. But the pressure here for me is on Charles Oliveira, not Armin Sarukian. Yeah, this is like what when Getchy fought for Zeev. Yeah, it's a final eliminator. The UFC have said this is a final eliminator. Now, don't get me wrong. If Justin Gaethje or Max Holloway does th- something sensational, of course, the fan demand for either of those guys to maybe fight Islam next may well supersede it. But Charles Oliveira versus Armand Sarukian, just like that fight, just like the pre- then the fight that follows it, cannot not deliver. No. Because they are both absolutely sensational but also reckless as fuck. 
Yeah. And they use their recklessness to open opportunities yeah. to get finishes. They, they're just super aggressive. Yeah. They're both attackers. It's yeah. like, aggressive. Yeah, it's like, I know that maybe this is a bad example because it was recently a nil-niller, but do you remember when Klopp and Guardioli just used... Just, you, go, you, you go and play your way where you go and play your way. Yeah. And you get four threes and all, all that. That's what this is. This is two lads that... Actually, for example, Armin Sarukian is such an aggressive wrestler. He's, he's even attacking when he's being attacked, if that makes sense. Yeah. As is Charles Oliveira. Charles Oliveira wants to be in those vulnerable positions. Yeah. Because when you are attacking, i.e. Armin Sarukian, and he might have an aggressive top position where he's wrestling... Charles Oliveira is like licking his lips. Yeah, I'm on yeah. my back here, yeah, sweet as a nut. Here yeah, comes exactly. a triangle, sunshine. Mm-hmm. Let me rip that arm off. I'll take a little fucking ankle here. Yeah. Yeah. All those types of things. I, I, I think there'll be a finish because of that reckless abandon. Mm-hmm. And Charles Oliveira will find it. Submission or knockout? Submission. Yeah. I can't see him knocking Armand Sarukian out. I can see him hurting Sarukian. I can see Sarukian hurting Charles Oliveira. I can see Sarukian, because of his aggressive nature, yeah. in, in find it because he's a finisher, He will. He, I can see him absolutely hurting Charles Oliveira. I can see him being completely on top, looking, jumping in there, looking for some elbows on some ground and pound, and then all of a sudden, oh my God, he's in a fucking triangle. Yeah. How the fuck has that just happened? Yeah, yeah. And then, he's tapping. and Charles Oliveira's just like, yeah. Full of blood, <laughs> smack. You know what I mean? Done. He's been beat. He's just had the shit beaten out of him for four minutes, and next thing you know, he's walked away with a win. I can see that, and yeah. that—that's kind of where I'm at. I just think that experience. Charles Oliveira won't panic when he's getting the shit kicked out of him. He won't panic in because he's been there so many times mm-hmm. in this weight division. I think just Saruki might just get a touch overzealous, just maybe a touch, and that'll open up a gap. Charles is 34 though. Right. And there's a lot of. He's, well, on, he's, on, he's under 35. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you love that under 35. Nope. Nobody wins anything on over 35 in these light weight divisions. He's been around for an awful long time. Don't get me wrong, in his 43 professional fights. Wow. He's got 31 finishes in 34 wins. And he's been in the UFC forever and a day. This is fighting the best guys on the really? planet. He is an absolute finish machine. But a lot. And of look them, at the dudes that he's finished. Out of those nine where he's been finished, most of them, uh, where he's lost, most of them have been finishers as well. Judges are very rarely required for Charles Oliveira fights, period. But Armand Sarukian himself, he's got 14 finishers in his 21 wins, nine knockouts, five submissions. Okay, we haven't really seen the finishing machine Sarukian in the UFC just yet. But... He's still got that. You know, I think the two losses on his record in the UFC, lost to Gamrot, split decision, fight in the night, could have gone either way. Mm. And on his debut, Same. he lost to the current champion, Islam Makachev, split decision, fight in the night bonuses for them both, could have gone either way. Yeah. He's right there, Armand Sarukian. Mm. All he needs is... Signature. A signature scalp. This and is the signature scalp it, yeah. is Charles. This is as big as it gets o- yeah. other than the champion. Yeah. So I'm going to go to Sarukian. I think Armand's going to get it done. I really do. And that breaks me hard to say because Charles Oliveira, yeah. just like Justin Gaethje, are two of my favourite fighters. But I just think timing is everything. And I think a little bit like Ilya Tapora getting Volkanovski, I think this is Ilya, this is this is Armand Sarukian getting Charles Oliveira. I think 2024 could be the year of the new guard coming through. What kicks off this man card? Uh, Bo it- Nickel versus Cody Bundage. So that's the only fight on the card where... He's an impressive dude, called uh, Go, Bo Nickel. Bo, Bo is, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Listen, I think I've been... I wouldn't say hypercritical of Bo, because how can you be critical of a guy that finishes everybody in the first round? I think the big thing is, okay, the UFC, he's, he's got what people like to call the Dana White privilege, because the UFC realise right. how much of a potential superstar they've got on their hands. You know, this guy has got Olympic-caliber wrestling... Um, and in the world of college wrestling, he is the fucking demigod. So he's come over to MMA, into the UFC. They realise there's an untapped fan base there that love what he does. And because he's got he's wrestled at such a high level, because he has been all American and you know all these titles in college wrestling, he's so good with media. He's so good when you speak to him. He's incredibly humble. He's the type of guy, he's, listen, he's he's a classic All-American, isn't he? Big chiseled jaw, the Johnny Bravo haircut, everything else. 
But when you speak to him, you can't not be engaged by him and you want to root for him because mm. he's surprisingly super humble. And he's like, yeah, man, I'm, listen, I'm on a journey. I'm going a long way. I'm on this UFC 300 card and I totally appreciate the opportunity I've got here. But he knows he's on a journey and he knows there's significant steps yet he's got to take to win people over. Do we know yet whether he is a Dana White privileged fighter in the shape of a Sean O'Malley that he's being given these opportunities because he's going to get there or is he a CM Punk type character who's getting these opportunities no. because he's bringing something eyeballs but really hasn't got the potential he's, to go for much further. Of it, course. He's far better than the CM Punk. Of course. Comparison. But the We're jury's still know, out. Aren't we? No, We're the ju- jury's still out. I mean, the jury was out on Sean O'Malley for a long time and yeah. then he fought Pierre Dian yeah. and you think, okay. And then he knocked out Aljamain Sterling and you go, okay. He's the guy. So I think it's going to be that. You're not going to know until he, until he's yeah. until he's there because you know that the wrestling pedigree is there. But as we know, this game has changed so much over 30 years. It's, it's good. He's got the best base. Wrestling is the best base. Yeah. But what's the rest of it look like? What are their man's looking like? I find out at the weekend because Cody Brunbridge, he's looking at this going, fuck it, now you give me a ticket. I'm on the bloody May card here, kid. Of course, kid. absolutely. You give, Cody Brunbridge. You give me the All-American. Yeah. Sweet as. It's, a lottery, it's literally a lottery ticket. But punching that lottery ticket hard ain't gonna be easy. What do, what what do you uh, what did you make a Yuri today? Um, hmm. Interesting dude, isn't it? Yeah, I love Yuri, and it was it was a tough conversation because I think with Yuri you need you need you need time to massage him, not massage his ego, not that at all. Just time to get in his mind a little bit and <clears throat> bring out the very best of him. <coughs> Plus, you need a quiet environment. You were in noisy environments yeah, today doing the these interview interviews. The interview I had, I had went into the day was very social driven. So yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. give me an answer to this, this, and this. Give me an answer to this, this, and this. And I don't think you get the best out of Yuri Pogacic. No, you don't. In those moments. You want him to ponder and think. And... Yeah, of course. But do I think this is a great fight for him? Absolutely. Alexander Rakic is the guy. It's a perfect fight for someone coming off the back of a loss in a title fight, his first fight in however many years for Yeri because of the injury. He loses to Alex Pereira in the main event in New York. How would you bounce back? Put him in with Alexander Rakic, who right now has found good form. Yeah. That was at one point before Yeri even appeared in the UFC. We were talking about Alexander Rakic of being this, you know, East European that was gonna come in and take over, and he lost a couple and kind of slid away. And I think for he's got himself back though. No, that's what I mean. Yeah, but yeah. for Rakic himself, it's like who better than the former champion to yeah, go yeah, yeah. fight and rub it's stamp a, my shot. It's next. a great fight. I, I don't know. I don't know how that one's gonna go. You know. The un- he's so unorthodox as year he is, isn't he, with his striking, and you want it to be successful and you want it to work, but there, there were just too many holes in that game against Alex. Yeah. He was just reckless, I thought. Yeah. I thought he was reckless against Alex. There's a You made the point earlier about Jamal Hill having to go when he goes, punch when he punches, but that's got to be done intelligently. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to wait on the... You've got to back catch. up against the fence, catch and then and throw. Yeah, yeah. You can't just blaze forward throwing shots. And I think you did, did that, that in that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah. Um, if he does that against Alexander Rakic, I think he gets beat. Yeah, he could do, yeah, absolutely. But also, in typical Yeri Prachka fashion, he could absolutely mow Alexander Rakic out of there and be like, oh, okay, yeah. right. Right, you you're, were back, the guy you're back now. Was, yeah. You were ring rust last time. Bingo. Bingo. <clears throat> yeah. Um, prelims. I mean, we could do every single fight here, couldn't you? Yeah. Al- Aljo sounded brilliant. I mean, you you sat with Aljo today. He's in good spirits, man. But Calvin Cater, everybody knows, I picked Calvin Cater to be the guy at mm-hmm. the, in this weight division. And then he ran into Max Holloway, and Max Holloway lit him up. Okay, yeah. fair enough. But... That can happen. He took, he took a long... It can happen. Yeah, took a long period of time off. Bounced back really well. Came back really well. Looked good. Got some good, solid wins. I really like Calvin Cater's style. I like watching him fight. This is an elite test for Aljo. Mm-hmm. And if he wins it, he start, well, he's already in the conversation because of what he did in the weight division below at Bantam, right? Of, of having a title shot. He's already in that conversation. But if he wins this and he wins this in an impressive manner, rather than get ahead, right, I'll just see out this last round. Mm-hmm. If he goes and wins this in an, imp- in an impressive manner, I, I'm, I don't begrudge him, like... But, not jump in the queue. I know that obviously you've got Volt waiting. Yeah. 
which is absolutely right. Volk's the guy. We don't know what Max is going to do. No. But he's in that he's in that mix then. If he, yeah. If he does something special because of what he's done in the weight division below. Well, that's it. I, I think if Calvin Cater wins, you think well, he's two fights away. He's beat the former featherweight champ, the bantamweight champion. Sorry, but if Aljo wins, cause he's Aljo, cause he's been a champion. Yeah. I think the mentor, as you say, especially if he stops him, he's got 15 minutes here, and that's something that Aljo hasn't fought for a long time. Obviously, he's had, he had the most uh, fights that he down at bantamweight, most title defenses yeah, yeah, at yeah. bantamweight. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a good five years or whatever it is, four or five years since Aljo fought a three-round fight. So he's he can sprint rather than pace himself. He's also got the benefit of the fact that he is 10 pounds. He's got 10 pounds less to cut this week. Yeah. And when I mentioned that to him, his eyes lit up and he was like, fantastic. I had a little sly word with Mirab today. That's it. The lady killer is in town. Yeah. I had a little word with Mirab. I said, hey, man. He's always on for me. He owns social media. I said, mate, come on. How's old Joe doing, really? And he went, he's back firing on all cylinders. He said he had nothing left in the tank a featherweight anymore, a bantamweight anymore. Mm. We're going to see the real Al Joe. I know he's going to say that. He's his mate, his his training partner, and everything else. But. I really do like Al Jermaine Sterling going into this fight. I think Calvin Cater is the perfect opponent and that is absolutely no disgrace to Calvin Cater because if you've got shortcomings in this new weight division, guess what? Calvin Cater will expose the fuck out of your shortcomings. I think it's a 50-50. We really just don't know. The first minute or two might just tell us. If Calvin Cater can force Al, Al Joe onto the back foot and hurt him early, then I think we could see Aljo go into a little bit of a retreat mode and it could be a coming out party for Calvin Cater. But if Aljo gets his hands on him and ragdolls him and is still as dominant on the ground as he was at bantamweight, I think it's a tough night for Calvin Cater. Does Kayla Harrison hit 136? No. She, oh. was, she was fucking massive today. And that is absolutely not an insult by that I mean is she's a one five fiver. She looks like she's been. She looks like Michelangelo has carved it out of stone. She's she has a, she's got the most phenomenal shape. physique. Phenomenal. There is not an ounce of fat on her, and that's what I think the problem is, because she's got these incredibly big shoulders, these incredibly big arms from decades, literally decades of throwing people around in a gi, and it's one thing cutting water weight. It's one thing cutting fat. It's something else entirely having to cut muscle mass. And she will have to remove muscle mass to get on those scales on Friday morning. I cannot see her today. I didn't ask her because it's rude to ask a lady a weight. I did. What was she today? No, I didn't ask her an exact weight. But oh. I, 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 I spoke to her about weight. I've seen you speaking to her about her weight, yeah, which is why I didn't. But the looking at her today... She looked healthy, man. She looked great. Yeah, And she that's did. a problem. Yeah. Because she has spent her entire career at 170 in the judo. Yeah. And then she came down. To 155. To 155 to fight. Well, they made a weight division for her, didn't they, really, in the PFL? Exactly. Um, Lightweight. I know that she's had a little, she's had a couple of catch weights at 150. She had a flirt with 145 cut in. But 135 is massive. (sighs) It's a massive cut. Her last fight in PFL was catch weight 150. Yes. This is 15 pounds lighter than that. Yes. She is she has got a busy, busy week. Listen, no doubt she'll have used all the best sports pro- scientists out yeah. there. She's the consummate professional. Proper pro, yeah. But it's one thing going on science and breaking things down and going, this can be done. It's another thing doing it for the very first time in your life yeah. at 33 years of age yeah. when you have been a career professional athlete. Because yeah. for the first time, her body's going to go. Kayla, why are you trying to kill me? Yeah. And there's two ways that will happen. Either a body will play its part and the water water will still be coming out or the body will go, fuck that, man. We, we're we going to die. Yeah. And go into, and, and shut down. Do you know something? It's, it's my only concern about the fight because I think if she hits it, I think she's going to make a massive statement. If she, if she hits it and... She's not absolutely dead on the scales. If she hits one, I don't even think it'll matter, mate. I think it's only going to be a five minute no, fight. No, I, I think if she hits one thirty six, I I still won't celebrate the fight until I you hear see her on the night. she's gone. No, she's gone to bed healthy on Friday night. All oh, right, okay. Because I think hitting one thirty six might put in in such a vulnerable position that yeah. the medics might not pass her. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. It, literally Saturday lunchtime when it's like, yeah, man, she's fine. She here, she is fucking. You know, having some breakfast Saturday morning, then I'll be like, 
Fuck. Fuck. Holly, <laughs> run. <laughs> but let's not under... I know that Holly's of an age now where she's coming to the twilight... Well, she's in the twilight right now, isn't yeah. she? She's but, 44. But she has dealt with elite judokas mm. before in quite devastating fashion. Yep. Um, so if anybody can... Holly Holm can. Don't underestimate her and her, her, and her striking. She's been there, done it, got the T-shirt. She's seen everything in this game. Yep. What a, an opportunity for her just to keep rubber stamping this... Uh, rubber stamping? St- yeah, rubber stamping this uh, Hall of Fame career that is absolutely guaranteed. Um, but if she hits 136, I would back Kayla Harrison because she is a beast. Yeah, she's a phenomenal... Phenomenal, phenomenal, she's a very impressive person mm. in all ways that you could possibly imagine. She's incredibly humble, incredibly talented, got a work ethic that cannot be denied. Two gold medals sitting in a sock drawer at home. She's she's something very special. I hope she does make the weight. I yeah. hope she does. And that's obviously, uh, uh, I wish Holly Holm as much as luck as anybody on this card. But I think the UFC could do with a fresh injection of star power in the female weight classes with Amanda going Holly on her way out Ronda yeah. not coming back agree. Misha struggling you know I think Kayla Harrison could come in and that's no knock on Shevchenko and Grasso who's doing incredible things south of the border here of uh, Wiley and, and, and Zhao Nan who are you know putting really putting you need that all American map. but you do need that all American superstar and I think here coming through I think if she makes 136 the bantamweight division is 100% on notice. Yes. Raquel Pennington will be next. She'll go straight to a title shot. 100%. She'll beat Holly Holm. Yes, 100%. Um, Sadiq Yusuf, Diego Lopez. I love this fight. I know that it doesn't have that star power. I know you're looking around at all these names that were mentioned and you're thinking, fucking hell, that's unbelievable. And then you go Sadiq Yusuf and Diego Lopez. You go, oh, well, as a matchup, it's absolutely fantastic. Sadiq Yusuf is a guy that I picked a couple of years ago to be my one to watch in MMA. It's kind of... St- Stu- not stalled, it's just not been as quick as I anticipated it to be. Yeah. Uh, whereas, in total contrast, Diego Lopez bounced into the UFC, lost his first fight, Yeah. has got one of the greatest haircuts that I've ever seen in my entire life. That's fresh coming from me, who's incredibly follically challenged. Mm-hmm. But he is just all action, mate. So great to watch. I think it's a brilliant piece of matchmaking. Though. He he's, he's the guy that's really broke through in the last 12 months yeah. in the UFC Diego Lopez he came in at late notice lost that fight he is a bit of a veteran you know he's, he's I think he's got six or seven losses on his record you know he's not he's not like spring chicken young prospect type thing he is been around a long time based in Mexico fights out of Brazil comes into the UFC he's got that incredible mullet and everyone's like oh yeah okay but last year he stole the show last yeah. year every fight he was in was super entertaining bonus winning and he has become a real strong fans favourite for Sadiq Youssef, it's kind of like now or never, baby. You know, you're ranked in the top 15, but it's one thing losing to Arnold Allen and Edson Barbosa, people ranked above you. It's something else entirely losing to people who aren't even ranked. And Lopez, the UFC have gone, right, your reward for, mm. for breaking through is a ranked opponent. And Sadiq Youssef has got to stand up. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's a cracking fight. Um you you spent some time with Moy Carno today, man. Money Moy Carno, baby. I, I like over your shoulder, I'm watching that, going, "What is going on over there?" Like yeah. you with your Scouse accent, in with his broken accent yeah. of English, and some of the things that he was saying, it looked carnage. It was carnage. Yeah, it was mega. It was mega. Hopefully, the TNT put the whole thing out. But I basically just went, <coughs> "What do you keep picking on my mate for?" <laughs> and he was like, "Hey, and I went, Paddy Pimlet's my neighbour. Will you leave Paddy alone?" And he was like, nah, man, come on. I want to get that fight on. Business. But, yeah, exactly. Now, to be fair, listen. And I said to him, mate, if you beat Jalen Turner at the weekend... Very tough ass. You're going to be ranked in the top 10. And you're still talking about Paddy? But he's like, yeah, man, listen, this is prize fighting at the end of the day. I see Paddy is having a big paycheck hanging over his head. Um, and it's a fight that Paddy likes as well. I think we could actually see the fight, regardless of what happens on Saturday. Yeah. Coming to I think he gets I think he gets beat on Saturday, mate. I think I, I like Jalen Turner. Yeah, I think, I think he's, he's very, very, good. very good. And we know what Hernato wants to do. Yeah. Jalen's not thick. His takedown defence is very, very good. Nice long and rangey. I think he'll just keep him at range. Yeah. Jalen Turner's the he, he is the he's the one light out lightweight out there that's completely and utterly unique. 
in the yeah. fact that he's 19 foot 12 and he's just fucking massive and, and, and when you've got that size and that range and he knows how to fight long as well he knows how to use his range he's got very good takedown defence because he's got those incredibly long limbs I think it's a t- tough night for Money Moicano but I want Money Moicano to come through I want him to come through I want him to get that microphone I want him to call for Paddy Pimlet I want us to be all marching to Manchester in the summer to see Moicano versus Pimlet do you, the, the total contrast in athlete sizes here from uh, Jalen Turner being absolutely gigantic uh, for the weight division that he's in. Jessica Andrade is yeah, tiny. I know. Like proper tiny. Mm. Like, it blows me away. Every time I see her, I'm like going, jeez, man. Well, she, she must only be about four foot eight or Unbelievable. Four foot nine, something like that. And she's, she's, and she's so small. She's fought in every single woman's weight division, yeah. won in every one of them, become yeah. champion in one of them. It's, it's mad. Delightful character to be around, obviously. Doesn't speak too much of the Queen's English, but she's still got this really infectious energy, and obviously it's great to have her on this card. Bobby Green and Jim Miller. Um, no I'm Jim Miller today. Are we concerned? No, it's no. Jim Miller, man. It's the Jim Miller show. <laughs> He's feel fucking We're supposed to... to do some stuff with Jim Miller today, but we had them on the TNT main yeah. preview show anyway. Jim will turn up when Jim wants it's to turn up. Right, when you're a veteran stud like Jim Miller, you rock up. When what you want what to. I do hope is when Buffer announces him at the weekend. He just pauses. He's not going to be allowed, because of the TV broadcast, he's not going to be allowed to say Jim fucking Miller. Yeah. And that's what Jim wants him to do. And everybody yeah. wants that to happen, right? He's not going to be allowed to do that. But if he goes, Jim stops and lets the crowd do the fucking. Because I will. I'll be like, fucking Miller. Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. Buff, if, well, obviously, you're a fan. Pause, Buff. Me. Come on, kid. I think. I'll see Buff before the weekend and let him know. Just to remind him. I think. Pause, baby. Jim Miller should put that request in, shouldn't he? As uh, when uh, my, my official announcement is actually Jim, pause. Two, two second pause, Miller, Miller. Yeah, and yeah. then let us hit the fucking. Because yeah. it needs it, man. A guy that's been on UFC 100, UFC 200, got 100% record in both of those, by the way. Yep. Takes on uh, Bobby Green in UFC 300. It's the, it's the correct fight. Everything about it's correct. They've tried to make it several occasions. Both of these dudes could be actually fighting for a version of a BMF title, I suppose, couldn't they? Yeah. Um, I'm delighted for both guys to be on it. Delighted for Jim. You know that they're going to fucking just have it, aren't they? They're just going to have it. Well, Bobby Green's got that very uh, Diaz kind of style, hasn't he? And I think Jim Miller, it's just on the cards. Listen, he won this, He won UFC 100 points. Yeah. UFC 200 Stoppage. stopped Takanori Gomi. I think this is a submission. Get your money on Jim Miller to complete the tri- the perfect treble with a submission over Bobby Green I, I think Bobby Green's only been subbed once or twice in his entire career yeah. but fuck that Jim Miller's kind of legacy is on this one do you think he'll take his gloves off? no <laughs> how many fights has he had? just click his name there 2400 I think how many fights has he had? he's got all the records for the most bouts go down it's... go down on that sheet I want to know exactly how many he's had he's had 55 fights how many in the how many pre UFC? Literally most of them have been UFC, yeah. So you're looking at three, six, eight, ten. About eleven outside of the UFC. So forty so this is what? He's forty fifth or forty sixth? Four, yeah, something like that. He'll yeah. call it at fifty. He ain't calling it at the weekend, man. No. Nah. He's fighting on. Most bouts in UFC history with forty three, yeah. Right, there you go. He'll get to fifty. That's what he'll seven do. Seven more fights. Yeah, he'll have seven more, mate. If he has seven more fights, if he only had one fight a year, he'd make UFC 400. He's not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> He's already told us, listen, if I'm there at UFC 400, call. Put me down is what he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put me down. Stop it. Um, he would only be 46, though. Nothing surprising me with Jim Miller, mate. He's a fucking... Randy Couture fought in the UFC at 47. So. Jim Miller, what a guy. Uh, and then kicking us off, it is Cody Garbrandt versus Davidson Figueredo. Seen both of those guys today, both big smiles on their faces, yeah. both... Love Cody. I love them both. Yeah, love them. Cody is a he's a great guy, and obviously you've got um, it's an easier to build a relationship with Cody because you obviously speak the same language as him. Yeah. Uh, but Davison, mate, he he was the flyweight division for a short period of time, wasn't he? Superb, superb yeah. fighter. The Brazilian Zoolander. What was he? A sushi chef, a women's hairdresser. Yeah. Like he's ticked all these boxes. A little bit of a Renaissance man, and was the man for a short period of time. He was the man in the flyweight division. Now he's up a bantamweight. Weirdly, do you know what I heard today? Weirdly, 
even though he's the guy coming up to bantamweight, he's struggling at the weight. Well, that doesn't surprise me because he's, he's definitely filled out. I saw him sit down and thought, fucking hell, you look healthy as fuck, mate. Like, yeah. He looks stocky. Cody spends his life in the PI, so he's in great nick. Cody called for this. Mm. Yeah, Cody, yeah, off his, it, yeah. Cody off his last victory, he called for this. He yeah. got on the microphone, he said, I want Davison Figueredo. So here you go, sunshine. You've got it. And if you beat Davison Figueredo, if he knocks out Davison Figueredo, mm-hmm. beats Davison Figueredo, Cody Garbrandt's still a name. I don't give a shit oh, what mate. anybody of says. In fact, both of them. Whoever, if you win this in a, in a sensational fashion, you're you're a, a big enough name to to start talking about title shots. Yes. I don't think you get it straight away. No. You might get an eliminator, yeah. but you're a big enough name to say, right, I've knocked out this dude. I've knocked out this dude. He's a former champion. Come on, man. Bring me the fucking... I want to get back into title contention. Let's get it on. Bring me the bantamweight champion. Cody Garbrandt versus Sean O'Malley. <sighs> fucking hell. Nobody's fucking wrestling in that fight, are they? No, absolutely not. I don't think Cody's there, but beating Davison Figueredo by stoppage is the ultimate way to to uh, to get to get on the microphone and call for that opportunity. It's a great fight. It's a great fight for any to UFC kick, card. To kick off the but night. to kick off to be the first of 13 fights. <clears throat> at UFC 300 you will see that fight live in the UK at 11pm it will be on TNT as we said earlier Davison Figueredo versus Cody Garbrandt is the fucking curtain jerker that's how outrageous 300 is it's the best it's the best mm. it is the best will we ever see a fight card like it again I don't know I just hope when we do the review show Sunday morning I just hope it lives up to expectation. But looking at those matchups, looking at those... Well, they put 12 fights on. So you're going to get... There's going to be five there that you go, fucking hell. Yeah. At least five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Abs- and that's if it's a bad night. Yeah. If it's a good night... All 12. All, tw- all 13. There could be 13 bonuses there. Woo! Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're about to go out. We just recorded this podcast. Uh, so we're about to go out. You're probably going to see the diary of us going out before you see this podcast. I know that sounds a little bit weird. We definitely will, because I'm not editing this now, honestly. Okay, so we're going to go out. We're going to meet up with uh, Mr. Bispin, catch up, have a drink, uh, probably tell some tales. He'll probably be featured as well. Uh, there'll be daily diaries throughout the course of the week because there's loads of media obligations. There's also hot rumours that UFC 303's main event might just be in town being announced mm-hmm. um, Thursday. And we'll be around it. So we'll try and get you some access to that as well. All right? Uh, So make sure you subscribe to us. We are the Fight Disciples. You can subscribe on our YouTube channel. Uh, There's a button in the corner of this video. If you click that, hit the subscribe button, all that type of malarkey. And if you just want an audio feed, uh, you can get that via our website, fightdisciples.com, Spotify, The Works. Everything is there. Go and get yourself stuck in. Thank you very much for tuning in. I know it's been a little bit all over the place over the last couple of weeks, but things will be getting back to normal, especially from uh, next Monday. But this week, we are in Las Vegas on the ground for USC 300, the greatest show on earth. We'll catch you next time. Fight Disciples.